So I'm going to close that down. We've got the character controller done. Uh, advanced movement. We're going to have to add some animations before we actually play with that. And I am going to start getting into creating static variables in our advanced movement script. Uh, so we have a way of defining a base for everything in game. So for instance, the walk speed, uh, we could have a default walk speed for everything in game. And let's say we actually make that two. So that means everything in game starts off with a speed of two, and then we can actually add modifiers to it. Uh, so for instance, zombies are slow. Let's say you want a zombie to move at half speed. Uh, you would add a modifier of 0.5. And maybe you have some sort of canine or wolf type creatures in your game and you want them to be twice as fast. So you'd add a modifier of two. And of course, for things that you want to move at regular speed, it would just be a modifier of one. Uh, but that's still a little ways off. So uh, it's kind of a little FYI. Uh, so I'll, I know I need to leave these or fill these in. So I'm going to leave it open, but I'm going to go down and take a look at the rest of these. Uh, perception radius is 10. And I'll have to check in the script again. I believe that actually automatically affects our sphere collider. Let's just start it up and see. I'll have to go to my scene. And I'm actually getting a few null reference errors that might be interfering with it. But it does not appear to be. Uh, if not, I'll have to check. If, if it's not, then this would be a great way to automatically have the perception radius set for you for your mob. And I'm running Teleport, and Teleport and Mono Develop do not work nicely together. So I'm just going to stop this. Uh, it makes uh, Mono Develop crash. So I'm just going to quickly turn off Teleport. And there it is right here. Uh, it's already deactivated, so it looks like uh, it's right up here. I'm going to edit out the little spinning ball of death, because it generally takes about a minute. And, well, I don't really have anything to say for a whole minute while I watch the spinning beach ball of death. Alright, so we're back. It actually only took a few seconds, but I'm deactivating it. So keep that in mind if you're using two computers and you're actually using Teleport as well. It doesn't play nice with Mono Develop. Uh, I believe I saved my changes to my script. Uh, yeah, I must have because they're actually showing up here. A lot of times when Mono Develop crashes, sometimes you could lose your changes. And current and max health, I haven't actually set. I'm going to say 100 for default. Uh, later on, of course, we're going to have our mob's health start off at some sort of base for each mob type and then modified by its constitution. But for now, we just have to fill in a value, non-zero values here. So we'll get rid of uh, a couple layers that pop up over here. Uh, the AI script, uh, it grabs its target. We should actually make this private now because there's no need to fill it in. And I'm going to do that now. Uh, let's load it up. We originally had it public just so we could watch it target while it uh, while you moved in and out of its perception sphere. But since we know that works, I'm going to go ahead and make it private just so that when we're looking at the inspector, uh, we're only looking at values that we can modify. So we'll open it back up. Uh, here we are. We're in our AI and let's just go down to it'll be public right here target and we'll make it private I'm not gonna bother putting a little dash in front of it I'll well yeah let's do it while we're here and we're gonna have to find all instances of it so I'm actually just gonna copy and I'm just gonna search for it so here's the next one. I actually have it commented out, so I'm not worried about it. I'm going to go down. I'll have to change this to the one with the dash. Uh, there's 14 instances of it. Luckily, it looks like a lot of them are targeted or commented out. Uh, some of the older code. And we'll do this one too. And for the people that haven't watched tutorials, uh, all my private variables, I generally like to prefix with a dash. So when I'm looking at it, I know this is a private variable. Uh, there's many different ways to, to do it and many different styles. I know certain people like to do it other ways, but this is the way I do it. So there's two more after this one. As you can see, there's 12 or 14. This is when we're here. And here they are right here. And of course, one of them was commented out, but that's okay uh, let me 
me see. I'm going to close this down. I'm going to go back into Unity. I'm going to wait for it to re-import, which it looks like it did, and I'll just clear. So I have no errors in the script. So I'm going to close that. And I'm going to start looking for animations. And to start off with, I'm just going to give him the four basic animations that we gave the other one. So that means I come up here and I want to give him idle. Uh, you can drag idle up here as the default animation as well, but if you actually look in the script, uh, when it's first starting up, I have it set to stop any anima animation that you have set for a default. The reason why I'm doing this is because sometimes, not very often, but every so often I'll have an animation that won't start uh, if I'm using using it by default. And this is just an easy way around it. I just, I script it to tell it to start. So, uh, what else did we give him? I think we gave him a walk and a run and a jump, I believe. Of course, you'll want to fill all these out. Um, we got a lot. I think we've got all the animations down here that we have for our character now. And of course, you'll want more. And I know I'm going to want more. So, I will be adding more in later tutorials. But this is just a quick primer to get you up and running. And as you notice, this isn't the same order as the last one. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to do run next. And see, idle, we need a walk. Oh, we need some sort of attack. Oh, well, we'll get there. We'll do walk. Mm, walk. Here we go. And, of course, I'm just going to save my project. And then come down here and type in the name that's up here. So my walk animation is, well, luckily called walk. My run animation is going to be called run. Uh, one of the things I also want to adjust in this script is uh, with my model, I actually have the ability to walk backwards and it has an animation, I should say, set for it. Uh, sometimes you're not going to have that animation. And when your character is walking backwards, it can kind of look funny if he's still doing the walk forward animation. So we're, by doing it this way here, we can compare the walk backwards animation. If it's the same name as the walk forward animation, then we'll just tell it to play the walk forward animation, but uh, reverse, so it actually looks like you're walking backwards. And let me see. Jump was called jump. Idle was called idle. And I don't have any of these ones set up. So that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to save it. I'm going to go to my prefabs and assign them to a new prefab. So let's create one of those. And I'm going to call this, oh, I guess zombie mage. And I'll just drag and drop that on. And now I have two prefabs for mobs. Now, obviously, I'm, I know I'm going to want more. But this should give you a good idea at least how to get the basics set up. Uh, we really haven't gone too far past the basics. So I'll open up the Game Master again. Uh, mobs, size of two, because I've got two different prefabs. Uh, skeleton and zombie. Now I've been asked a lot of questions about, you know, they want certain mobs to spawn in certain zones or areas of their game. And the way I'm going to be handling that is actually with the... Uh, the spawn point itself, uh, we still haven't actually really done anything with the spawn point. It's really just an, an empty game object with a gizmo attached to it. But I would like to be able to store this type of information in the script for that particular spawn point. Uh, of course, I may later on change my mind before I actually implement it. But right now, the way I have it drawn out, the prefab or the spawn point decides uh, what mobs can be spawned there. And the way I'm doing that is so that you can actually go to an area and take your uh, spawn points in that area and up their level of the mobs that can be spawned there and also the mobs themselves. Now, I may go ahead and refactor it a bit more and create uh, zones that the spawn points go under and have that zone tell all the pre or all the spawn points what they can do. But... It's still a little ways off before I start getting into, you know, unique mob spawning in unique locations. Uh, for now, let's, again, just keep it simple. Stick to the basics. And let's save it. So let's start it up. I'm going to zoom out a bit so I can see all three of these 
spawn points and I'm going to start it up. We'll see if everything's running. And if you look, I've now got mob spawning. So it spawned a zombie, which the AI in it, uh, <laughs> I thought I disabled the zombies weapons. I'll have to take a look. I might not have saved it. But anyway, as you see, you know, the, the zombie spawned over here and over here. It spawned a skeleton for us. And the AI is working. It's chasing me. Let's run backwards. <laughs> These models just crack me up. And let's go right near this one. And <laughs> there, that zombie's chasing us too. So let's save that off. And that looks like uh, everything that we need to know for our mob script generator. Uh, we could actually go ahead and hide the state. We might as well, since this is about cleaning some stuff up as well as introducing the way to build the game from just the scripts and scratch so I'm gonna make this public oh sorry but we're making it private and like before I'm gonna put my little whoops I am gonna put my little underscore in front of it and then we're gonna change all the instances so I'm gonna copy it this time I'm gonna come up and uh, well, we could do, there should be a way to mass search and replace. Uh, but since I have state uh, throughout the script in different, like, uppercase, lowercase, I don't want to take the chance of it uh, changing, like, my data type state. So I'm just actually going to search for it by the actual name. It's only 16 instances of it, so let's just go take a look. Uh, well, we'll just keep going down, actually. And as you can see, there's counting a lot more instances than what we actually have. So we'll just keep going down. We'll need to change this one. And we don't need to change those ones. We just need our actual instance variable of state. And we'll just keep going. This one needs to be changed. And we'll change that one. And there's one more after this, which is right there. We don't need to change that. So I'll just close down the find. I'll save. A quick check over in Unity. Make sure there's no errors. And there are none. And I generally like to run it just to make sure. And it looks like this time it gave us two skeletons and a zombie. <laughs> okay, well... That's all the time I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next little set of tutorials. Bye-bye.